This is Corey, the product designer for 9CI, and he assists with research as a result of working on the EMF meters. How's it going? Corey, thank you for chatting with us. Yeah, yeah, good, good talking with you. And uh, yeah, so I'm just a little background. I'm in Fairbanks, Alaska, and um, I've worked with uh, Dave for a couple of years, and I've been doing some work with uh, 9CI on the meters and some of the products that um, some of the viewers may have seen in uh, backgrounds of uh, some of the videos. So I got into um, reading about some of the EMF stuff and Martin Paul and some of the stuff that we'll get into um, as a result of being involved with the testing and, and design of, of some of the 9CI products. So glad, glad to be with you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, lately the news has been full of stuff about 5G um, and right now specifically the coronavirus. So those two, uh, there's been some talk about them being possibly linked in some ways, either cause yeah. effect or correlation. Yeah, so there's a bunch of a bunch of narratives flying around about um, coronavirus on its own, and and five G is a, a subset of those. And there's a lot of conspiracy stuff going on, and um, I, I think that that is kind of too bad because there's there's the um, loud conspiracy camps, and then there's the people that are very pro five G and um, Kind of damn the torpedoes, and um, the there's a yeah, and there's like a, a scientific discussion to be had that's that's getting lost in between those two camps. So I'm I'm hoping that we can kind of address some of those issues without um, going off on either deep end. It's a good way to put it. Uh, so uh, one of the first things that make it kind of conspiratorial. Um, are the rollouts for 5G. So uh, there are 5G maps and coronavirus outbreak maps. And you've seen, perhaps you've seen people, they just laid them on top of each other and there's a lot of overlap between those. Probably for very valid reasons though. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're not set up to do it here, but I, I found a, a map of, um, Ben and Jerry's ice cream stores that you could make just about the same um, comparison. And if you just, if you lay the two maps on, on each other and, and uh, but we don't see anybody saying that ice cream of a certain variety is, is causing coronavirus. And the, the thing that I think links those maps is, is population density. So anytime you have a dense urban environment, your propensity for the, uh, any infectious disease to spread is increased just because of the contact, increased contact you have between people. Yeah. And that population density also creates the market demand that's needed for the uh, rather expensive rollout of, of 5G towers. So I think it makes sense that both of those things um, occur in the same location. Um, that being said, that I think that there's some, some stuff that we can talk about with um, 5G. 5G and biology that um, kind of works whether or not those um, those kind of simple correlations are, are valid. Yeah, so bringing up the fact that Wuhan was one of the first places to roll out 5G and they did it very recently. Um, but there are biological, there could be biological links between millimeter wave or RF, EMF, and right. viral. So part of, part of what we're seeing is, is a, a breakdown in, um, a, it's a breakdown of trust in institutions. Right. And um, so we've seen a lot of pressure from telecom companies to uh, really, you know, it's like a, a social thing, um, like, 5G hashtags and I heart 5G and um, and I think a, a lot of people are just saying, hey, we need to study this more 
And then there's people that say anyone who's calling for a slowdown in the rollout is, is a conspiracy if not. And um, so we, we've, you've talked about on this channel before, um, VGCC's voltage gated calcium channels. And um, I'm sure we can put a link to that in the, uh, in the description. Um, but if you want, we could just go through a quick um, rundown on VGCCs because a lot of the claims about the biological effects of um, EMF are, are related to or tied to um, the work that's been done on, on VGCCs. Yeah, so, um, Dr. Martin Paul's initial paper is what okay. we did video on. Um, and he discusses uh, how VGCCs or voltage gated calcium channels are affected by uh, EMF and how they are affected. We won't go into that as deeply as he does, obviously. And we've already done it in the video previously. Um, but to summarize, Corey, did you want to? <laughs> Summarize real quick. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> inside the cell membrane, there's these, I guess they'd be like little ports, um, and they open and close based on the concentration of calcium ions on either side of the cell wall. And each one of these ports has four alpha helices, and those have um, uh, charges on them. And mm -hmm those charges respond to the calcium ions, but they also respond to um, electromagnetic waves. And when they are forced open by, um, by EMF sources, which is, which is what, I mean, we'll just go on that assumption for this discussion. And, and um, that's discussed in Martin Paul's papers and the video that you did on that. Um, when those calcium gates are um, forced open, you get a big influx of calcium into the cell. And that causes um, <clears throat> kind of two groups of problems. One is uh, calcium signaling, which is just like neurons, um, how neurons communicate with, with each other and neurochemical signals um, being um, either uh, reduced or, um, or uh, increased artificially. Um, and then there is a second set of issues with free radicals and oxidative stress within the cell, which can cause damage to cells and um, uh, human reproduction, uh, uh, neuro, um, neurological problems. Um, so that's, that's kind of, yeah, like, like, you said that's the, the short version of uh, where the where the science is on on EMFs and um, cellular biology. Mm -hmm. Right. So five um, G technology, and I guess we can discuss what that is right now. Um, there's a lot of talk about like what five G is, what frequencies they're at. That it's always. Um, higher up there, there are different phases, right? The phase one or the lower frequencies and then the other phase two. Mm -hmm. Higher frequencies, everyone's very concerned about the higher frequencies because we already have a ton of stuff in the lower frequency range. So 3G and 4G are already in the sub six yeah. hertz range. So a lot of When people call for more studies, um, it's often said that, well, this is all, it's all legal, it's been studied. Um, yeah. The FCC is, has given us licenses to do this safely and, and there's no, no need to, um, no need to fear. Yeah. And a lot of those studies were done like in the 60s and 70s and, um, they are looking primarily at um, thermal heating effects. Um, and that was, a lot of them were done before digital communication. So you were looking at um, lower frequency, um, continuous wave sources. 
And since then, there's been a flood of um, Pulse Digital um, uh, transmissions, <clears throat> transmission schemes, or modulation schemes. And that pulsing is what, um, what Martin Paul suggests is, is uh, potentially damaging the cells. And so we don't know what, what the combination of higher frequencies with different modulation schemes does to cells. And um, so I think that's where um, research should be focused going forward. And so there's, there's the um, kind of, there's, there's two major parts of 5G. One is um, the, the first range covers GSM and a lot of the existing frequencies, Wi-Fi is in there. And that goes up to 4.7 gigahertz. And then there's um, a second band that covers 24 gigahertz to just below 60 gigahertz. And those are the, um, the bands that are, are currently being used, but there's, there's also room in the spectrum to go up to uh, 300 gigahertz. Um, and we don't, um, I mean, this, this technology is very new and we don't know what the, what the effects are, so. Yes. Um, so there are some papers out there that are discussing how um, specific frequency bands, so specifically the 60 gigahertz band, uh, has a resonant effect with oxygen. Yeah, <clears throat> so um, I think that's why we see range two go up to right below 60 gigahertz and then there's talk of stuff above it but but nobody's going that far yet and so you have this problem with oxygen absorption where um so if you think of your microwaves it's at 2.4 gigahertz and you have an oscillating field and um all of the water molecules um interact with that frequency which causes all the water molecules to rotate and that kinetic energy is what heats the food up. Um, so that is what, that's the same thing, uh, that same principle is going on, but with oxygen molecules at, um, at 60 gigahertz. So you have, um, I guess it'd be like the potent, a higher potential for thermal heating effects in, in, of oxygen in the body at those frequencies um, and from a uh, telecommunications point of view um, it would be like trying to see through smoked glass at, at that frequencies because there's oxygen in the atmosphere and it's, it's just like uh, why bother trying to transmit in that range when your, your signal attenuation is going to be very high. So while well, there's risk on one side of some kind of um, biological interaction, um, there's also less of a uh, business case to try to make transmitters that op operate in that, in that specific um, band. Right. Um, and so back to 5G, there's, uh, in order for 5G as a, telecommunications industry to work and take off. Um, they have to have a high density of antennas or bases, mm -hmm. whatever you like to call them, um, all over the place. Um, is there further information about why that would be? Yeah, so you have this thing where if you're limited by the uh, transmission power that your, that your base station can be at, um, which is usually set to um, thermal heating limits um, at, at close proximity. Um, then as you move away from the tower, as your frequency goes up, your signal drops much quicker. So it's, it's between uh, the square root and the cube root, depending on, on what kind of antenna you're using. And um, because of 
these frequencies are, are so high, your attenuation, um, your attenuation's high, so you have to keep putting, um, unlike a cell tower where you have it centralized and a bunch of devices can connect to it from miles around, you need a lot of these towers everywhere. And that, um, for one, it increases the infrastructure costs, but it also means that everyone's um, dose is a, a lot higher, potentially a lot higher, uh, because if, if your neighbor three houses away is trying to get a, a signal, it means that you're getting um, a really high dose if, if it's right out, if the uh, base station is right outside your house. So I think that's one of the things that people are, are worried about is kind of this big um, influx of these towers into their, into their neighborhoods and they don't know um, what the effects are. They're being told that there's no, no health hazard, but um, people, some people report having symptoms and, and there's um, reports on, you know, affecting animals and, and all kinds of stuff. So um, that, I mean, the, the tower density problem is, is one of the first things that everybody talks about and that's been covered in a lot of other places. So. Sure. Um, so getting into the, the big thing that everyone wants to talk about, the coronavirus, obviously. It's kind of why we're all stuck inside. Um, yep. <laughs> so there's been obviously a lot of research, but uh, not a lot of time for it to be processed for all these studies to be well thought out for them. To, they're obviously not long-term studies. Um, so a lot of the stuff that researchers are doing and like that medical communities are doing is just reaching at straws and looking at the past to see what works and hoping to relate it to this new thing um, that may or may not work because it is new. It's novel. Um, so one of the previous treatments that has been considered for other diseases such as uh, malaria and a few other illnesses, correct, was the chloroquine um, and zinc. Uh, right. So, so, so the, these are being discussed and, and debated as, as we speak. And um, this video kind of came out of us doing a little bit of uh, reading of papers and, and stuff on, on that subject. And um, so the, the supposedly chloroquine works because it, um, it brings more zinc into, um, into cells. So zinc, so when you have a virus inside of a cell, um, the virus membrane, once it's inside, it kind of dissolves, and then the RNA of the virus uh, starts to copy. So it makes a reverse copy, and then a regular copy, and then it makes sections, or like incomplete versions. And those incomplete versions become the, the spike proteins that go on the shell of the next virus. And um, the argument goes that zinc reduces the rate Intercellular zinc reduces the rate at which this um, RNA translation process can happen. Uh, so it slows down the virus uh, replication. The problem is that um, zinc doesn't readily um, get into the cell. Uh, we found some references to it being related to uh, VGCC activity. And VGC activity is just, it's in all cells throughout the body. So it, it's a pretty critical thing. Um, more, more research required. Uh, so that was a bit of a dead end. Um, oh, sorry, and the, the, the connection is chloroquine um, is able to bind to zinc and then go through the cell uh, membrane so that the chloroquine brings more zinc into the cell. And, and we were kind of investigating whether um, there's some relationship between zinc and um, or the intercellular levels of zinc and exposure to EMF fields. And um, that was a bit of a dead end. But we found a bunch of other stuff, um, some recent papers by Martin Paul on the topic. And um, so his, one of his kind of, 
who's just poking at it was that the, the question of are is it true that there are higher mortality rates in um, cities that have been early adopters of of five G and Wuhan is kind of an interesting case study because they were um, among the first. Uh, yeah, like China's first 5G smart city, and they had 5G roadways for autonomous vehicle testing, and um, they were at, at the forefront of this. And in um, Paul's uh, March 30th statement, he points out that um, the Lombardia region had a uh, fourteen percent um, mortality ratio, um, and they also had five G, okay. and um, Wuhan was another city that had really high case ratios. Uh, he also points out that the the next city in Italy um, had a, an eleven percent ratio or, or deaths per cases, um, and they didn't have five G and then a couple others, they're all lower. So, um, and they didn't have 5G, but it, it's not, it's, he, he points out that it's not a very strong signal, but there, there does seem to be this, um, this correlation between these, um, these 5G cities and, and higher. Um, yeah, yeah, which again, population density is a is a confounding factor on that right and there's so many factors to consider with uh, virus viral outbreaks like yep. who are getting sick who are the ones dying etc it's a lot to think about um yeah. a lot of factors <laughs> uh so yeah and and in that there's there's a couple um it's kind of a, a, a range of theories about what those those interactions would be. Um, everything from uh, 5G spontaneously creates viruses in the body, uh, which doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> and um, on the other end, it's it's something like um, exposure to high uh, RF fields from 5G um, reduces the body's immune response. So that, well, it's a coincidence that this this virus happened at the same time. Like the uh, Wuhan had 80% of their um, 10,000 uh, 5G stations come on in mid to late October uh, 2019. So that's like Right right. The- yeah, it's right when when the coronavirus was coming out, which is I think what's gotten a lot of people's attention. Um, however, if that's a coincidence, and um, the five G through VGCC um, channels is, is reducing the body's immune response. Um, You're already adding stress through ox- oxidative stress. Right, right. So now you get um, populations that are kind of vulnerable because of their um, their exposure to this to this new uh, thing in their environment that they that they don't really um, they can't see um, and then, and then you, up. right right and then you throw you throw this virus in the mix and um, get, get some pretty high high case numbers now we would expect to see the mortality rate um, being lower in rural areas um, where there's no 5G rollout and there's fewer cell phone towers um, and maybe not as much Wi-Fi, uh, but that that data just uh, isn't isn't really available at this time. Probably won't be for some that, time. that would be like a some kind of prediction that you could make about the distribution of cases. Sure. Anyway, well, thanks for chatting with us about uh, your research and uh, what you think was has happened and what will happen. Um, 
we will talk again soon. This is obviously a very big rabbit hole to start diving into, and there's a lot of dead ends or tunnels that are still under construction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good way to put it. Yeah, it's a, a dynamic situation. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, thanks for having me on. It's great talking with you. You too. <laughs> cool.